Hi, I'm Gary Szilagyi, VP at AWS in Annapurna Labs. I've had the pleasure to work on silicon in a variety of products, ranging from consumer electronics now to data centers. And I have the privilege today of leading a team that works on our generative AI silicon here at AWS. Joining me today is Nafa Bashada. Nafa is a colleague and one of the co-founders of Annapurna Labs. Nafa, between the two of us, I think we have over 50 years of collective experience in the semiconductor industry. And I think we both know that there's a big difference in putting up a slide or announcing a chip versus actually executing and delivering at scale. Something we'll talk a little bit more about later. But first off, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Gary. And I'm, I'm excited to be here as well. I, I too have worked in silicon design for most of my career, actually all of my career. Actually, you and I met together in uh, one of the early pioneers company in semiconductors back in the 90s. We remember we were building all the chip that powered most of the routers of the internet in Absolutely. the 90s and 2000s. And since then, we worked together in Annapurna. We innovated for in the cloud for with Nitro. We innovated on servers efficiency with Graviton, if you recall. And the last five years, both uh, you and I and the rest of the team started the journey for building custom chips for generative AI. You know, you know, people ask me all the time, what's the most exciting part about working on chips? I can tell you, it's not when the project is started, and actually it's not when the project is announced, but really the most satisfying part, it was always for me in community to be, is when you manufacture these parts at volume, at scale, deploy them at scale, and seeing the customers use them. And not seeing one customer, seeing a lot of customers use them at scale. So today, Gary, I hope to give you and uh, you and the audience an idea how we build these chips at AWS and how we were able to execute and empower our customers. If I go back 12 years ago, we, Annapurna was founded uh, with me, my longtime collaborator, Billy, an amazing set of engineers and leaders who worked with us for the last 12 years to continue to work with us. We believe that there will be, could be a different way to develop chips. Back in the day, we started Annapurna because we looked at the other way chip industry was investing in infrastructure in the data center. And it was minuscule at that time. But if you remember in 2011, 2010, everybody was running for a gold rush of mobile phones, smartphones, and tablet. But we believed that the industry was over-indexing on investment for mobile and under-investing in data center, leaving it in an underserved. That combined with the fact that there was increasing, I would say, disappointment with the inefficiency and the ballooning cost of developing chips back then. Especially when we compare it to the software development, the software productivity and the productivity of software developers have improved so significantly in the past 25 years, while the productivity of chip developers hadn't improved as much since you and I started in the 90s. So we saw an opportunity to redefine how we develop chips with greater productivity, lower cost, and honestly, with a better business model. Hence, we started Annapurna Labs. Yeah, for sure. Annapurna is a unique entity that uh, within AWS, and we get the pleasure to architect, you know, specify, design, manufacture, and really operate volume uh, of production silicon end to end. And that silicon is all purpose built for operation at cloud scale. So as you know, our teams work not just in the hardware domain, but across the entire software stack. And we're able to optimize uh, customers' needs in a wide variety of applications. And you and I talk a lot, but it's really about building and designing chips in, in the hardware domain that mimic the speed and agility that can be often found in the software industry. And today our teams at Annapurna are responsible for delivering products that power AWS infrastructure. That includes Graviton, three generations now since 2018. Our generative AI uh, silicon, that's Tranium and Inferentia, custom built to accelerate deep learning workloads. And I think we're at five generations today of Nitro, silicon and cards, which are the fundamental building blocks of our server architecture. And I think I can speak for both of us when I say we're proud that AWS has deployed more than 20 million chips that we have designed that we have architected and manufactured since 2014. Now, one of Annapurna's key differentiators, Nafa, is how we build chips. And since you are at the center of our architecture and really build in a lot of the key differentiators in our development process, 
Why don't you talk a little bit more about how we build chips versus how they're traditionally built by other companies? Thanks, Gary. So let me tell you how we actually, how we focus on building chips in reality. And I'm not going to talk about the chip performance or how the high-level benchmarks or how code is written, but actually how they are built and tested and deployed. So think about it. If you're going to build a chip, it's like building a house, but there are 50 billion bricks to yeah. put together, 50 billion bricks. Yeah. And you have to follow this architecture blueprint for the house while still running the structural beam, the plumbings, the wires, the ventilation ducts, and putting the windows and the doors to communicate with the external world. Yeah. Except this time, it's each brick is a five nanometer brick, a transistor no wider than five nanometer. The house itself is actually 80 levels high, and the wires just, you know, all the ducting and, and the electrical wire you have to run inside the house is 35 kilometers or 25 miles. And that house, the footprint of the house is no bigger than an inch by an inch. Once you do that, you still need to meet the volume demand, you need to be cost efficient. We need to build these chips in a few months. We need to build billion, millions of them per year. And each one should not be cost more than tens of dollars of, or a few hundreds of dollars. And Gary, one more thing about these chips. After you build them and deploy them, you need to deliver electricity and power to power them. Just think about it. In a typical house, your house, my house, in the best case, in a, in a U.S. house, you'll get 100 ampere, 100 ampere of electrical current uh, from a utility company. While the chips we build today, the size of a quarter, they actually need 500 ampere. So imagine, they need 500 X of more water your house would need. And, and not only they need 5 X, they need the 5 X, the 500 app, in a few nanoseconds. So you really need to build not just the chip, but while building the chips in the system, you need to build a pretty wide access road for the, all these electric current. And inside these chips, you need many, many, many electrical wire, the 35 kilometers of wire equivalent that I told you about. And all these wires have to be low resistance and so that they don't heat up. And they need to make sure they don't have any short or any open circuit. Yeah. So designing and testing this level of complexity is what we focus on. And I think, I, I believe in many people with this modern chip both design and manufacturing is actually one of the marvels of humanity, right there next to developing airplanes or landing a man on the moon. It's one of the most engineering innovation uh, the humanity ever seen. And this is where Annapurna is really different than most companies, where we not only design the f blueprint of the chip, but we get in involved in actually building and manufacturing this. House. We're not just the architects, we're the contractors and the builders and the plumbers. We try to get the electrical current delivery. We deal with thermal heat extraction. And we're just not, doing, not just dealing with the logical of hey, zeros and ones and gates. That's a very small part of developing chips. And what we do is actually done also by the best of breed of fabulous semiconductors. And we, because we have built a team to do that early on, 12 years ago, from the, from the start of the company, we built a team knowing that we're not only going to deal with the blueprints, we're going to deal with the manufacturing. And it's the beauty of building a manufacturing team and operating operation team next to the team that design and do the blueprint is they can do full cycle collaboration from a blue, so the blueprint can impact the manufacturing and the manufacturing can give feedback to the, blue, to the blueprint and it's a lot of enjoyment to get from delivering that and driving volume and cost for that. But let me go back to designing a 50 billion brick house. To design that, just as a design fact, getting the blueprint for that, you need a very large compute infrastructure. And you need it in very spiky times. So you need it for two months and then not need it for three months and then you need it for another two days. So we were able to use the AWS scale to do, to do this bursty scaling and run all our 
compute infrastructure for designing chips on our chips uh, at, in AWS at massively parallel uh, runs. And we were first actually to use cloud scale to develop chips and build a blueprint. But many of our colleagues in the chip industry couldn't have delivered some of the most popular chips today without using the cloud the same way where we started using it six, seven years ago. Yeah, I, 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 I love how you describe you know, uh, devices and building blocks like this that have uh, uh, bring a, you know, the amount of power you have to bring into your house to something of this size and, and scale. And there's a lot of functionality that goes in here. So I love the analogies, uh, breaking that down. Because one thing I think that distinguishes Annapurna in our design process is that we build very complex products, but we have to make them be uh, intuitive and easy to use for our customers. Yeah. And given the complexities that you spoke about earlier, um, maybe I'll give a little bit of background about uh, how we develop some of our AI chips. Now, you know that uh, you just said that you know, we don't just build the chips, but we're also playing an integral role in the holistic design of AWS servers, the network, and a variety of software interfaces that customers use like ENA, our elastic network adapter, EFA, our elastic fabric adapter. And this element of being able to uh, understand what functions and features are most efficient at various parts of the stack, whether it be at the application layer or in the server hardware or deeply embedded into the silicon, it gives us the ability to build um, leading edge, state of the art functionality for our customers. And it's probably not, you know, uh, it's not just one of the few. And if it's not only the case, when the chip developers actually interface with final customers who are writing the server application, that's really one of the big advantages I think that we have uh, being at Annapurna. And customers want to make sure these things are easy to use, right? Um, they're looking to AWS to make sure that things, they just have to work. That's why they come to AWS. It just works day after day. And we have customers that migrate their AI workloads from GPUs to our custom silicon instances, like Inferentia, Inf1, TRN1N, and F2. And their goal is to improve on performance and significantly reduce their cost. And our goal, as you know, is to make sure customers don't have to see any uh, of the hard work or sausage making that goes into developing these things. They just have to uh, be easy to use. And that's a hefty task. And it's one and a mission that we take super serious and our teams are committed to and work on every single day to improve upon because we're never perfect and we're always improving and we're always listening to the customers, which is why the Neuron SDK is so important uh, to our AI platforms. The other challenge I have is the science of machine learning is moving so fast. It's, uh, and as an organization in building hardware, our job is to try to predict two, three, five years down the road uh, in order to stay pace with the industry and most importantly with our customers. And as you know, the development cycle for chips can be you know, as fast as what we can do in two years or less, but it gets deployed uh, in you know, three, four years down the road. So you're talking about a five year horizon and the need and the ability to predict at that level for the machine learning community and our customers that evolve in that time span is really, really difficult. Because uh, unlike most general purpose workloads, which don't evolve as fast, ML is, uh, is like on, on fire, right? It's just a, com it's a complete state of the art to, to keep pace. So how do we do that? We're constantly listening. We're constantly working with our customers. We're constantly improving our software and our infrastructure. We take that knowledge to make best predictions we take the knowledge of what we're getting from the science and the, and the community, and we have to be able to do that multi-years uh, down the road. But we have to still do that while we're executing on schedule and on budget. And the strategy, frankly, comes from experience, and it comes to working with great people like yourself and the team, and I feel super fortunate that we have that experience and know-how to strike the right balance between cost, schedule, and really future-proofing our products for customers. So let's pivot back uh, a little bit to developing high-performance CPUs like Graviton, which we're all super proud of. What were the difficult challenges to overcome in developing that product line? Uh, so when we developed Graviton, there were many difficult challenges, difficult challenges early on. One of the key ones is how to design and get so many transistors in a single ship, like we talked before. Every piece of the silicon developed really comes down to billions of transistors working together, all performing on a chip. 
So, for example, Gary, remember that house with the 50 billion bricks? Actually, this is our baby. This is graviton with 50 billion transistors and uh, 35,000 meters of wires we put in there, over 80 layers to connect all these transistors and get them to work and get all the electricity to them. And it's, it's one of the things we're most proud of. And not because I'm showing it, it's because we deployed it at massive scale and I have a lot of customers, massive number of customers using it and enjoying the energy efficiency, the performance and the cost saving, especially in these days. I think we're going to have to rename your house Graviton now. <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure. With pleasure. <laughs> so, Gary, what do you think are the advantages, actually, of developing silicon as part of being a cloud company? Right? We talked about how complex is doing the chip, but what's the advantage we have using AWS Cloud? Well, I personally, I, I love that we uh, kind of practice what we preach, right? We don't just develop chips for customers to use our cloud. We actually develop our chips using the same AWS cloud that our customers do because it gives us the speed, the elasticity, the security, the lightning fast networking and storage, everything that's required in order to build very complex chips like this on very compressed schedules. And it also gives us the ability to leverage geographic diverse development. We can have people literally everywhere in the world working on the same database uh, as needed. Now, earlier you spoke about the complexities of power in chip development. One of the things that AWS does is we leverage some of the latest tools to ensure the quality of the chips that we produce. If we're talking about how to deliver current and power to our chips, we need to make sure that we can deliver it fast enough in picoseconds, not nanoseconds. We have to design chips that can support that kind of current draw reliably, consistently, and for years. And additionally, we need to know where things could fail. We have to monitor signals everywhere. We collect tons of hardware data, gigabytes uh, monthly, and we use AWS services like Redshift, AWS QuickSight, Glue, along with many more tools that allow us to cross correlate failures and build pre predictive mechanisms in order to catch failures well before our customers do. And the end result of this is our customers end up seeing products such as Graviton as more reliable uh, in our servers, in our EC2 instances than in than, uh, alternative solutions. So now if we've had a long history together at Annapurna and previously, and we've been able to successfully lower cost and really increase performance and bring value to customers. And you mentioned earlier about the importance of sustainability in the cloud. Could you talk a little bit more about what we've been able to do in delivering processors that are more efficient? Absolutely, Gary. Actually, this is one of the most things that are most passionate, and not just me, I speak for the entire team. We all sleep really well at night, knowing that how we keep innovating continuously and continuously design silicon to drive energy efficiency. And we see now our customers liking what we are driving. The first advantage we have is the silicon we build has been purposely designed for the cloud. There is no clutter, and it's designed to do uh, optimal, not just price performance, but optimal power performance. So they are the most energy optimized. Secondly, we also optimize a silicon design based on customer feedback. So again, we take out things customers don't want, and we in many ways, we are lucky we have a front row seat to deal with so many millions of customers to know what they need and to optimize for them and, and to make sure, we, and actually more important, know what they don't need so we take it out from the chip so they can drive both power efficiency and cost efficiency. So Gary, can you talk about other aspects of we have like the software we're building, Neuron SDK, especially how is that helping us continue to optimize AI and generative AI? Uh, certainly. I, I mean, we're here talking about silicon and what Annapurna does so well, um, but I'm sure a lot of people know that we actually build a lot of software that go around these chips and into our uh, infrastructure. So for AI we and, and Tranium and Inferentia, we developed Neuron. It's a single SDK to support all generations of both training and inference chipsets uh, and instances. It consists of a compiler, runtime libraries, and developer tools that help our customers optimize for performance. 
Um, the AWS Neuron compiler essentially converts models to a binary object for execution on our silicon. The compiler supports many commonly used machine learning frameworks and operators used in everything from computer vision, natural language processing, recommender engines, and, and more. Uh, for Trainium-based instances, for, ex for example, we've added a variety of new capabilities into Neuron that support distributed training, which is a collective communications operations over our EFA. Um, we build in a lot of custom operators uh, and additional advanced capabilities like uh, control flow and, and dynamic shapes. And the goal of Neuron is to help the customer experience with minimal uh, um, customer tuning, i.e. it just kind of has to work. And it gives us the ability to constantly iterate to deliver new features and functionality. We're constantly working on ease of uh, use for our customers. We're adding operators all the time. And the goal is to deliver best of breed cost and performance to our customers. Actually, I like Gary, how you drive your team for the Neuron team. Their job is to make it boring to migrate from uh, non-trainium yeah. systems to trainium systems. So that customers don't need to worry. They're just, things just work, as you said. And Boring is good in these things. That you, that you, as a customer, you don't have to worry yeah. about using a, a new hardware. Just get the efficiency, the power and cost efficiency. That's the goal. Now, certainly, this has been a, a really fun discussion, Nafa. Uh, maybe before we end, let's uh, let's talk briefly about what we think is next for silicon development at AWS. Oh, thanks, Gary. So, first of all, I you know I'm not good at predicting. We're also not good at pre-announcing products. We only talk about products when they are available for customers to use. Now, having said that, there are pretty strong tenants we're convicted on. First, I think peop people, developers, the world will continue to require even more compute power, more compute efficiency, and more compute cost efficiency. Uh, and I think we're ex even more exciting about the new workloads that people will discover and drive in the next f 5, 10, 20 years. Well, we also believe that most of this is going to grow on the cloud. Giving the innovation, especially the hardware innovation you and I and the team are working on that we're bringing to the cloud, the cloud is the place where you can have more innovation at scale and it will be more sustainable. Well, I think you uh, certainly undersell your ability to predict because we've got quite a few chips that show uh, we're doing a pretty good job at it. Um, but I also see that customers are, are looking to make sense of even more data. Um, data that their customers are generating, and they're looking toward to us to help support you know much much more complexity in training and inference models that have uh, have emerged over the last couple of years, and that are going to continue to emerge in the foreseeable future. So, Gary, in closing, we talked about all the difficulties and how challenging it is to build one chip. But thanks to the passion and the talent for the team that both you and I are lucky to work with, we're doing multiple product lines with multiple consecutive execution or multiple generations with this chip, and this chip, this chip, and bringing them to customers' hands. It's so much fun to go every day to the office and see the satisfaction on the face of our engineers because they see the satisfaction on our end customers' faces when they deal with them. I'm confident as we continue to do what we've done for the last 12 years, working with our customers and with the passionate and innovative team we have, we will continue to deliver more innovative chips to come. Absolutely.